Welcome back to the 14th part in this series and in this one we're going to carry on with the to-do list front end. Uh, in the last one we went over how to incorporate put support into the API itself using the Django REST framework but in this one uh, we're going to try to connect our front end by making that put request to our, our, our back end API. Now let's go over to uh, the JavaScript I suppose because we want to make this form so whatever they t type in this box we want to submit that, but when we submit that, it appears in this list using Angular, but only on the front end. So we need to also, at the same time as when they press this submit button, we should be seeing a request here. It should have a method put, and it should have somehow submitted our data. And I'm actually going to duplicate this tab, and I'm going to also go to the API itself to do for slash API so that we have a list there and we can see if it's being updated just by coming here and refreshing it. Now let's go ahead and go to JavaScript then and I think what I'm going to do is probably add another function a bit like to do add which gets called at the same same pretty much the same time as to do add and all it's going to do is just make that web request that put request to our API. Uh, I'm going to go to the template and find this submit button here so for some reason at the moment it's not actually a button, it's just an input. So I think I'm going to uh, redefine it as a button. It's going to be submit still. And I don't really need a name for now, but I'm going to say submit. And I think that still gives us a button. So it still works. And what I want to do is I want to add what's called an ng click. And I'm going to set that equal to save data. So this is going to be the name of our function in Angular that we're going to be calling. So a bit similar to how we did the done button. So at the bottom we've got ng click remove. And so now I need to go and define that. I'm going to just do it down here. Uh, so on the scope I'm going to put the name of that method, save data. And I'm going to define it in the same way that I have the others. And what I want to do here is I want to make a HTTP dot put request and I want to call the to do API and I want to give it some data. So we'll come back to that data, I suppose. In fact, we could do that now. So we could find a variable data and it's going to be equal to the data that we want to send to our API. In other words, it's going to be the same data that we would put in this content box whilst we were making the put request using the, the interface that the Django REST framework gives us. We are doing that in the last video. So to do that in code, what I'm going to do is a similar thing. So I'm going to copy this data structure actually because it's quite similar. What I could do is paste that in there. I'm going to say instead of to do text, the API expects just text and it's going to be scope.todo input. For the done here as well I can actually just leave that as false because if you look in our input form we don't actually have a way for our user to say whether it's done or not and this is sort of by design because I think that if they're writing a new to do item the sort of assumption being made there is that they haven't done it yet. So I think that's fine to leave it as false for now. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to do I think is take out this console log because as you see here at the moment we've got data being sort of logged in the console. We don't really need that so I'll remove that as well. Now if I refresh and I type some text in we should see that it makes another request and so as you can see here it succeeded. It's got a status 200 which means that's good it went through. Uh, the request uh, method was put so it means we should have saved the data to our API backend. So if we go over to our API and refresh this, you can see it's got another element here. It's got that uh, to do false as, as we sort of defined over here. And for all intents and purposes, this is now saved in our database so that if we refresh our application, it will be persisted. And because we've also made this get request, it's going to be sort of loaded as well. So that's really nice. We've got the first two major parts of our sort of CRUD operations for our API. We've got create and we've got read. Now this is going to be quite a simple application so I might skip update but we are going to do delete and that's probably what we're going to do in the next video hooking up this done button to maybe delete the items in the to-do list.